welcome to a new episode of Bon Vigilantes TV. We all arrived in June, a month which uh, also marks the start of the Football World Cup. But there is no time, unfortunately, to talk football today, as bond markets keep us busy, and very much so. Last week we saw significant market moves with uh, Italian politics being the epicenter of action. Well, Italy has had 90 governments in around 116 years, so political instability is nothing entirely new for the country. But this time, however, markets feared another round of elections looming, with polls suggesting an even higher share of vote for the populist parties. And given the size of the economy, markets started to worry about the Eurozone tail risk event. As a result of this, we saw the spread of five-year Italian government bonds shooting up to high yield levels. Part of the sell-off has reversed towards the end of the week then, after Italy managed to finally form a populist government. But still, with so much action in the government bond space, I'm particularly keen to understand how the Italian market, uh, high yield market is coping with the current situation. To answer this, no one would be better placed than James Tomlins, high yield fund manager at m and Morning James. Good morning Mario. <laughs> So Italian issuers account for 17% of the European high yield market, so it's a significant amount. So how did those Italian businesses with higher credit risk perform during those couple, last couple of days? Yes, yeah, so last week was a, a pretty volatile and weak month for all Italian risk, uh, as, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of difference in terms of how individual bonds and companies performed. Those companies that were very focused on domestic Italian on, or Italian government bond risk did very badly, particularly um, bank paper, Italian 81 and Cocos, in some cases lost 20 percentage points over the course of the last few weeks. Um, on the other hand, good quality Italian corporates with lots of international businesses and foreign earnings actually held up very, very well. So you've really got to dig into the weeds to, to mm -hmm. see uh, how the difference in these, these bond prices have, have come about. And the great example, it's also mattered how long your bond is, how long dated it is. Uh, for example, uh, Telecom Italia 55s, very volatile piece of paper, very sensitive to spread moves, sold off several percentage points. Telecom Italia 20s, uh, much shorter dated, much less sensitive, held up incredibly well. So volatility is something we generally like as active managers as volatility creates mispricing, good entry points. Um, and was that, have we been um, looking into particular names that have weakened, that are unduly punished maybe? It's a good question. And I think what we've learned over the last few years is that politically inspired volatility can often create some very nice investment opportunities in the short term. There's been a lot of noise, a lot of uncertainty, but sometimes you just see things don't actually change that much. And when that happens and the fundamental economics reassert themselves, you can see some nice price action in your favor if you can take these opportunities. So again, we have been looking at the Italian market. You have to make a call on the politics long term, but if you get comfortable with that, there's some nice opportunities there. In, in particular, you know, for instance, we had a, a new issue last month from a company called Nexi Capital. Great business, happens to be in Italy, has sold off. We think that could be a nice example where there is some opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about this business, uh, um, you told me that there's also been um, some interesting things going on in terms of covenants, right? Yes. Um, one of the big criticisms and the fair criticism for the, the new issue market in high yield over the last few years has been this covenant weakness, i.e. the documents and the rules governing these deals are getting weaker and weaker and less investor friendly. And Nexi Capital had some pretty aggressive terms in its documentation when it first came to the market. But it was very, very pleasing to see the whole high yield market as a whole in Europe push back against these document changes and reassert a much better position for bondholders in the long term. So again, you know, we've seen some interesting dynamics there. And in the end, good business with much better documentation made it quite an attractive deal in our view. Mm. And uh, talking about engagement, I know you, James, spent a fair amount of your time analysing the high yield market on um, environmental, social and governance factors. So when it comes to those, those um, ESG issues, what, what's most important for, or which pillar is most important for the high yield market? Yeah, ESG is 
getting more and more important all the time, both from a client perspective, they want it, and from the market perspective, we need to and should focus on these issues long term. When it comes to environmental, social and governance, I think it's very clear in my mind that governance is by far and away the most important, particularly when it comes to investor returns. It's something we've always done as part of credit analysis. We've looked at how companies are run, are their interests aligned with bondholders? And that can be very, very important uh, no matter how you look at a business. But yeah, so governance is very much front and centre when we look at high yield markets. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, uh, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, have a good week and see you soon. Bye for now.